Hey wonderful people and welcome to the fourth episode of the Silver Coin Podcast. As always you're joined by Gal and Lan, but today we are also decided to basically bring in a very special guest who will hopefully bring some lively and positive energy to the podcast. I'm pretty sure you already got bored of listening to the same old rambling of the two of us, so yeah, either way, today we're joined by one and only Maki. Most of you know him for the role of the graphical designer on a project, but he's also one of the most important people in our development team. But above all, he's also our friend. And today he will help us explain a few things from the topic which he's very familiar to. Of course, we will talk about graphical design, so let's just dive straight into it. And although I already mentioned a few minor details, um, about Maki, right? It's probably best to introduce yourself, right? So go ahead. Uh, hello, I'm Maki or Marco. Uh, I am the graphical designer of Silvercoin. Um, I have uh, met Lan a long time ago, and uh, that's when I uh, pr- pr- like kind of told him that maybe we should make this project. Uh, and we started by making this game together. Uh, I actually studied at the Academy for Multimedia in Ljubljana uh, for uh, the design, uh, so Institute Academy for Multimedia. Um, And yeah, basically I love Japanese culture and I love to dance. That's a bit about me. Uh, I'm kind of new. I'm not like an expert at design, but I do have some knowledge and skills. And this was like a perfect opportunity for me to develop some skills and to get more um, knowledge about designing uh, from the things that I gathered at school so I can bring them to the project. And then with Lan, I saw an opportunity. I loved the game and I told him maybe we should start this project. Uh, and we started, started it as a joke or like more as for fun. And then it turned into this. And now we are deep into this uh, project, I think. Yeah, so um, we already talked about you a um, a lot, actually, in the previous three podcasts, I think, I mean, mean, a lot. We mentioned you a few times, and I think, uh, Lan, you can tell us a bit more, maybe, how you met Maki, how you became friends, and most of all, uh, most importantly, um, how basically this project started and why he was such a big part of it all. Yeah, really quickly, so I don't bore people. It was like this, Uh, me and my girlfriend were at this board game pub we have in Ljubljana Um, and uh, we were playing some games and there he was, Maki, sitting with uh, a bunch of other people, his former girlfriend also and uh, we were basically, I think it was a game of Game of Thrones, right Maki? Yes, yes. Yeah, we we met over uh, a game of Game of Thrones, we we needed six people and um, Basically, we bunched up together and played the game, and ever since then, basically, we were um, meeting each other in, on game nights at my place or maybe at uh, that game pub, and uh, yeah, it just uh, spontaneously um, set this entire thing off. So, like, it was um, it was spontaneous, as Maki said, uh, like joke project, hobby project, call it what you want to call it, but uh, yeah, that's how it started. And uh, for me, it was the most important thing about Maki was that he was passionate about it. Um, and uh, if I didn't see that passion, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't have the, the energy also to do it myself. But uh, since I saw his passion, that reignited my passion. And yeah, now we are deep into it uh, long after that. Yeah, some might say it's destiny, you know, he, special, he specializes in graphical design and that's definitely one of the parts we need to make a game, um, especially, um, so it all started with the two of you. So, talking about graphical design, it is going to be our main topic of, the, uh, of today, of today's podcast, right? Um, so, many people um, do not know the difference between art and graphical design. I mean. You can say do not do not know the difference, but um, 
it is a thin line between the art and graphical design and many consider some projects, some stuff made by graphical designers to be art and vice versa. So maybe Maki, since you are the expert of it, um, can you quickly just go through it? What is graphical design? What is uh, how it differs from art and basically um, all the stuff you know connected to the graphical design? What do you need to do and uh, what are the premises of it? Something like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, design has many uh, different um, forms. Uh, I personally uh, am uh, more of a UI and UX, so user interface and user experience. That's my main focus, so uh, how the design will look, how it will feel, how the person um, basically um, seeing this design, how they will interact with it, and how they how to make it easy for them to understand. Uh, especially in board games, this is really good because you want to make uh, things really simple. So when someone sees a card, you can instantly recognize the symbols, recognize where the patterns are, so basically, graphical design for me, for example, is creating some patterns, some uh, sort of uh, blocks, some sort of um, lines, some sort of like uh, shapes that uh, make the whole card or uh, board or something uh, viewable or understandable to someone who is firstly coming to this game or to different uh, sort of things. Uh, but there are definitely different types of types of graphical design that you can focus on. Uh, but I primarily focus on this type. Then you have like more of this artistically graphical designs, which don't focus so much on like in, uh, user experiences and user in, uh, um, interfaces. Uh, so, but um, in short, I would say that basically it's shapes and blocks uh, being placed in a certain pattern uh, on a card or a, some sort of design and then uh, slowly introducing some sort of shape, like um, maybe like symbols or something to make the those um, re robust, or how would you say, like um, square blocks into something more fancy and m more uh, cool or something. So I would say designing is very uh, simple, but it can go into some little bit of art, but it doesn't usually go to artistic ways. Usually we'd call an artist that they would do some sort of things because usually graphical designers some do have the possess the skills of really being great at also drawing and stuff for example i don't really know how to draw so it's like um i only do certain shapes and box and then certain effects and stuff like this but i couldn't draw like a figure or a person on a card so that's definitely different i could maybe uh, say here can here the figure can be placed and then for example a rock art, uh, artist would draw certain figure also uh, my skills are very good because uh, it's also used for uh, some of the monster designs that uh, you guys are seeing uh, are also my ideas um, not all of them obviously but like uh, for example the waterman or something like this uh, some of these designs come from my uh, my um, my mind basically and certain ones from lands basically so um but that's basically in short what design is um just yeah i don't know if there's any specific question i can maybe answer it yeah yeah some might ask the, um, if design is only photoshop and basically um, designing so is it or do you need some other skills and other you know yeah, yeah skills uh, basically yeah, you basically, I don't, I usually use, do, I do use a lot of Photoshop. I do also use Illustrator um, and you can use uh, hand drawings. Some people use paper first to draw ideas, scan it, then put it into like a program, then draw it or this. But usually it's Illustrator, Photoshop and InDesign or for the people that use uh, non-paid versions, they use their alternative programs which I don't know which are exactly because I don't really delve into those. I use the, um, the, the ones that I mentioned. Uh, but no, it's not just Photoshop. You need to know a lot of other skills. Also being able to um, visualize uh, stuff um, and understand things. So yeah, basically it's not just um, designing in a program, yeah. Yeah, and as you mentioned, there are a lot of types of different graphical design, right? And um, in 
our project, you're obviously focusing in board game graphical design. So is there a difference between, you know, normal graphical design, you like um, designing logos, icons for um, companies, for marketing and stuff, or to specify and to basically focus on board game um, specifically and to design cards and to design logos and to dis design map at the end of the day? Is it different? Is it the same? Just using it in the different area or something like that? Uh, definitely, there is a difference between um, logo design and um, designing like a board game and stuff. Because for logos, you're usually just focusing on logos specifically or logo types, um, which just means that your focus is only, mostly on that. Uh, and usually people are really good at that. Uh, for board games, um, I think you need a variety of skills, which are also like, I would call them icons or logos for example certain things need some certain logos for example the coin uh, on our game i made for example the dragon certain icons in the game i made uh, certain ga uh, certain icons you can take like for example a heart or something you don't have to make them but uh, certain you have to make them so yeah there are certain types of logo design in them but there are definitely there's a difference there's you can focus on one thing for example like um, just designing bedding um, pamphlets, for example, and you're mostly focused on that, or like t-shirt design or stuff like that. And usually those are also word designs and stuff. Here it's also a lot about uh, using uh, letters, using uh, blocks, like I said before, lines, using, and then using colors and some shapes to make the design uh, on a card or a design on a board or a design on a, a different types of... Um, game mats as I would call them uh, and yeah they, it's definitely a difference between just logo designing or specifically designing maybe pamphlets or designing um, I don't know booklets or designing some um, like rule books or uh, maybe books I would say uh, because for this project a lot of these things I do so for example rule the rule book the, um, the board I did the boards the um, the uh, the icons, everything of, of this I basically do. So it's like a lot of other skills that you combine into this uh, one thing, right? Yeah, as you said, you're basically involved in almost every aspect of the project. When I'm doing my marketing stuff, you know, social media and stuff, I uh, I, I need a lot of your help, right? Um, by basically you know um, needing design or to help to need help with a certain um, you know like form of uh, post or something like that and also in design in um, game design in development you're involved with everything and maybe Lan you can go through um, everything that Mac is basically doing for us and how much work he's putting and sweat and effort and basically heart he's, do he's giving his whole his soul for this project and um, maybe you can describe it best um, how much he contributes to all of it actually oh it's, it's not that much actually <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he jokes around a lot he uh, he he doesn't do much uh, but uh, he's helpful I guess <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but seriously yeah I mean I don't want, like I said before, I don't want to bore people. Like, I'm sure that most of the people who are serious about this business are doing are doing these things uh, in a very serious manner, are devoting a lot of time. Um, and uh, although we <laughs> we are also doing and sacrificing a lot uh, by doing it, but uh, I just want our work to basically speak for itself. Uh, you can see by by what we have done um, that yeah that there was a lot of love put into it and Maki for sure was uh, very important when doing all of that uh, from the beginning like just just pushing through and uh, getting the excitement uh, uh, to start a project uh, like that was very important and then even um, later on because you you do you do have your um, good days bad days and so on and you need people to push you on to encourage you even when you feel like you you don't really want to do it um so yeah that's that's one thing but other than that i also think that uh 
he's a wonderful graphical designer he knows his way around the, the different um, programs and uh, I'm sure that he has also learned a lot uh, on this project because it just requires so much uh, so so much different uh, skills and um, and like all of us he's learning a lot uh, on this project also um, and I think it shows also um, but th that's for you to say Maki right uh, what would you say Do, did you learn stuff along the way or not really <laughs> uh, yeah I think a lot it's a lot of learning and I also think a lot of um, with LAN we did a lot of quick design or stuff. I think a lot of things people also don't see until they go into Tabletopia for now that I do mostly. Some things were on Facebook, but um, a lot of things are behind the scenes. Some people don't see the things that I do, like for example, uploading to Tabletopia. A lot of these things that people don't might, might not even see, like uh, thumbnails for YouTube, uh, certain things that are uh, maybe not um, at first glance uh, seeable. But I definitely learned a lot from this project uh, and um, I'm still learning like um, I think as we go further certain cards will get upgrades, certain cards will get more into detail. For now there's still I think there's a few cards that I think I really love and there's, there's then there's certain ones which I still think that they need development but because of all this we're going to ASEN, we're going to here, we're going to there, there has to be a certain point at which uh, certain cards have to be stopped for now or like uh, printed out so I have to do them uh, really quickly or like uh, so we have a template so people can start playtesting the game actually. Uh, the game like started off with really simple designs so uh, it was like a whole project. I think it's like we started from like really simple card designs, really simple shapes to this and I think a lot of people will never see, maybe we'll make a book or something, but like we'll never see like the first cards that were ever made or like how it actually developed into current cards, which I think is like a, from zero, like a, from zero to ten basically. It was a whole uh, uh, change of design and stuff. So yeah, I think uh, learning and uh, the process of the game is really good and I love it, yeah. Yeah, learning, as I said, and also um, one of the things I remember the most, probably that was the most interesting to me, was the design uh, of the map, of the world map, of the Tosia that you're playing on. Um, I found that really interesting how you guys did it. And fun fact, um, it was not made by an artist, by Rook, but it was actually made by Maki and by Lan as well, with his ideas and his knowledge. Um, and Maybe uh, instead of me rambling about it and talking, uh, you know, secondhand and stuff, um, maybe you guys can walk me through, walk them through it. You know, um, our audience, um, how you did it and what were the struggles? Because the first design of the map was terrible. Let, let, let's just say it. it. It was quite terrible and it was not what we imagined and what we wanted. So a lot of work has been put into it. Um, maybe a few months, you guys will correct me on it, but um, yeah, a lot of work has been put into it and I think we are all very satisfied with the final product and um, that we gladly present this map to um, all of you and basically, you know, to the public in, in this case. So yeah, uh, Lan, Maki, um, wh whoever wants to go first, um, basically um, Walk us through the process, to, uh, through all of the things you needed to learn, to do, to buy maybe, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so should I start, Lan, or...? Go ahead, um, <laughs> sure. It, it, it's your time to shine, you're the, the honored guest. <laughs> yeah, so uh, as you see on our, uh, on our Facebook or on our, on our website, you can see the map. Um, basically, it started off with a really... We started off with a really simple shape of like the map. Um, we took some ideas, then gathered them together, put it on this map. I had some old drawings from LAN, so I knew how the shape would look. Um, and it was like such a huge um, like a map. And I was like, how will we make this into <laughs> an actual board game? Because like you have to have stopping points. I'm like still worried. Like, before it was printed and I saw it in real life, I was a bit like, okay, it kind of works. But before all of this, I was like worried, will this actually functionally work? Because it's such a huge map. 
it has 90 locations like uh, just cities and then you have like curb spots you have uh, like uh, the sea path you have like a compass on it you have like uh, certain points on it it's like uh, it's all of the like all the stopping points hidden paths oh it's so much it's like hurts your brain it was like uh, a lot of things that you had to put into this uh, format and it's like like I think it's like uh, a, a small size it's not that much and you had to put all of this into this map uh, but it started off I think with a really simple uh, shape then it went with a really I think we started off with this like more of a world of Warcraft or like more of this um, kind of artistic uh, style it was really simplistic uh, then we started off by making like some colors and it, they were really kid like or really bright too many bright lights and stuff like this then we also made like cities how the cities would look um, and then uh, Lan saw it and he was like he didn't want it to look like this and then we decided to work on it together is if I remember correctly and basically we I think bought some sort of book maybe Lan will say later what the book was and then we went through this book of how to actually design uh, maps and how to draw the mountains, how the mountains have to shape, how the mountains have to form. Uh, also, all the names are lands. Uh, I didn't have anything to do with the names, uh, so the ideas of what the names are, a lot of them are historical. Some are also some friends or some colleagues of lands, uh, but some also do have like some historical uh, things on it, um, and then also like uh, how to design the border. And probably the map will also see some further development. I'm not 100% sure this might not also be the final, final look, but it's probably the almost at the end, but maybe some small things, some trees or something might be added later that you won't see. But yeah, there's still a lot of development that probably has to happen. And I think from short, it just started off really badly. And then before we bought or Lamb bought or got the book, it was really not going and then when he explained how he wants it uh, we then worked I think for like a month a bit more maybe uh, almost every day uh, to make it and it was it was uh, like really pushing it because we were like uh, crying <laughs> this is so I was like crying this is so fucking hard it was really hard to make um, because I never did a map in my life this was like the first time I tried to make uh, a map and I'm really kind of proud that it um, it has a lot of success and people love it, so yeah. But I'll also leave it to Lan, so Lan, go ahead. Um, but yeah, like, uh, you, you said it well, like, uh, we had uh, a concept that I draw by hand, which was not, nothing special, but, but it, 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 it was enough as, as a sketch, right? Then, after that, um, we, we basically saw how we would like to do it, um, with your skills and uh, we as you mentioned bought the the book through Kindle uh, about map map making yeah so then we just went like how the rivers how the roads how the like different tips like it was a really cool book and we just went page by page and then we went to the map and we went literally inch by inch um, and uh, the map is one of the most important things about this game because it's it's not just like the center of your attention where you go and so on but we wanted to create this vast world that you're traveling in and uh, that you really do have that uh, immersion and sense of uh, distance um, and distance plays a part um, to different locations and so on and it's all about optimize, optimizing your uh, journey um, and uh, by having a bigger map um, those things were achievable uh, in the end, so yeah, I'm also really proud uh, about uh, how we went about it and how we did it, and because I know that like literally every inch of the map, like like how the mountains are positioned, how the elevation should look like because of tectonics and stuff like that, like uh, how the how the small things near the shoreline should be, like the names that Maki mentioned, like different regions have different cultures how they would name stuff why they would name it like that there are like some easter eggs hidden um yeah there are some some names of, of people that are important to me also hidden in there just so 
I can honor them, I guess. Uh, so Maki has, of course, his own town. Uh, try find it in, in, on the map. Uh, there is a Ma Maki town. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, bunch bunch of interesting stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's cool. Um, and yeah, the, the 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 fact that it was done by a graphical designer, not an artist, and, and the way it looks, I think it's spectacular. So yeah, well done, Maki. Thank you. Yeah, one of the things I think we are all proud of, very proud of. Also, um, are there any other designs you made, Maki? Um, the question specifically for you that you are really proud of, that you would like to showcase or tell us about it, and maybe rant about them for a little bit um, so yeah go ahead yeah i really uh, think that um, basically i love the map and i love like from the cards because i don't think we still haven't went deeply into the boards uh, maybe also the character board but this was made with rook's help so i'm not gonna go into that but uh, which i made like personally just by myself i really really love like the weather cards. This is like my favorite type of cards. We also had some uh, help with voting from you guys on Facebook. Uh, so we are really thankful for uh, your opinions of how you wanted to look the uh, how you wanted the cards to look like. Um, uh, like we picked like a lot of designs, like the back of the, the cards, and then made the front of the cards. Uh, I really love the back and the front of the cards. Um, I don't know if the people saw the. Uh, front, but I really like both of the sides. They're really easy to read. They're really functional of how to move the token. So you're going from uh, basically month to month, uh, from season to season. It tells you the cards is very simple to understand. It's uh, really great. I think this was one of the best. I think personally, the best like even UI, uh, user experience, user interfaces also look like design wise. And I would like if all the cards would look at least this type from the back and this type from the front so uh, of this type of caliber of skill i would say basically um i think these are my personally favorite uh and then also i think mission cards uh for mission cards i think the uh, back is still not designed as i would like it but the front i really love uh, it was really hard to create um how your missions will look so I would, I had to basically, we had a lot of, again, this was a brainstorming uh, because uh, how to make the cards look, um, so you have the whole map and how will we make it? So you have to go from the capital, which is where you get the missions to the city where the mission is located. And now how to make this uh, all feel and look like, uh, and I think we made it really good, like showing the whole map and then just the two cities, like if it's the golden cities where you start, and you, how long it will take you to get to that city. We also then created some tokens which you can place on those cities to mark them uh, so you can know where they are. But it's really easy to understand. It also tells you how many uh, points of movement they are away from the capital. Um, and also it tells you like um, if, you're using by, is, if you're using the hidden path, how many points it will take you. Uh, so I really like that uh, design of the cards. Uh, hopefully, maybe we'll put them on the website later so you can see them. Or if you have played the game, you will probably see them. Uh, and I think they're really good. Um, it was It's really hard to make those cards because you're trying to make this big map now into this like sort of small card and you have to make it understandable. So it's kind of hard to kind of uh, make. And again, I think a lot of me playing games and uh, playing um, board games and video games helped me with this idea because I, I we started off with this like we want a huge map and it would show you on the huge map and then show you on the small map then we were like no you wouldn't be able to see that uh, so it, we just went with this zoomed in a version of one part of the map uh, I, so yeah those are one of the cards I also like and I think um, maybe also uh, character cards um, I, I personally like them a lot also or like monster cards I think they're really decently made also really simplistic to understand um very cool uh again like i said certain things um is very hard to make in this game because we have so much information to put on the card that sometimes um i can't really create a lot of shapes or a lot of um 
cool designs because we're limited by a certain amount of space that I have to create. So definitely certain cards have a little bit more of space to put in some flare or some like gl gloss to it to the card or like some cool effects to the cards and certain cards don't have this space so they might look a bit more um, robust or a bit more uh, strict as I would call them maybe in this sort of design but hopefully by the end they might have some small kinks or stuff that um, or crevices as I would call them maybe in the cards so it will look a bit better uh, but yeah there's definitely a lot of still a lot of work to still go through the cards uh, before we go to Kickstarter. But for ASEN, I think we already have some cards. They will be printed, and uh, people who will go to ASEN will probably see uh, certain designs and cards in real life. But yeah, that's. I think those are my favorite cards. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it was mentioned a couple of times before, and you basically emphasize it now a lot. Um, and maybe it has not been specifically told. But the functionality. A lot of people when talking about graphical design and when looking at graphical design and thinking about graphical design, they think about visuals, right? How some stuff w look, right? So basically, uh, if you have a card, how this card looks, if there are cool designs, if there are cool shapes, cool logos, cool icons, um, cool, I don't know, frame or something like that, and um, then coins and then cool design on the coin. but. You mentioned it a couple of times, the functionality is really, really important when it comes to board games and when it comes to board game graphical design. And uh, the fact that you played and uh, a lot of board games and that you are experienced in this kind of stuff definitely helps. Um, and you also work together with Lan on it a lot because Lan is obviously our game designer and he knows how game works and should work and how um, the cards should be functional to basically explain and to be as easy as to understand as possible, right? Because th this is the stuff you emphasize to be easy as to be easy and to understand, right? So if you have the um, mission cards you mentioned to basically to be functional, to tell people um, as quickly as possible how far this um, location is from the capital and maybe if there is a um, forest or water in the vicinity or, and stuff like that. Uh, and this all comes part of the functionality, not to the visuals. Maybe elaborate on this, um, how functionality is important and why functionality is so important and what kind of, uh, which details you need to be very about. Basically, Lan, you, may, you can maybe help him um, with this as well, right? Because you know um, about functionality maybe better than everyone, right? Yeah, um, yeah like uh, there are like bunch of stuff. Like for instance, one of the things that was very important and we also recently um, tested was the colorblind factor that's going to improve also. So from the get go, from the start. We um, wanted to make it uh, colorblind friendly as much as possible. Um, so that's that's a functionality factor also involved in it. So and that's done uh, a lot through graphical design and basically symbolism because the best colorblindness um, antidote, I guess, is the that you basically put symbols instead of color. That's the best way to do it. But we also tried uh, with colors naturally. Um, and uh, then there is a like one of my favorite cards that, that speaks a lot about functionality is uh, are the mission cards um, because there is so much information on them and they help you and, and it was like uh, this big of a test of how to actually do it that in, in that when a person gets the mission and sees the mission card um, that he is basically able to locate the location immediately um, and also not uh, spend time uh, calculating how how far away the di the distance to the location is, so that other players are basically um, just waiting on their turn and and downtime is happening because they they are calculating how how long it takes them. And the mission cards are very done very well done for that. They they tell you the type of terrain of the location. They tell you how how distant it is. How distant it is if you are using the hidden paths. Um, it tells you the name of the location, it tells you where are the hidden pets and wh what type of the hidden pets are on them, where are the, the, the cities located in that kingdom, um, just everything about it is just cool. <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, a bunch of stuff like that. Like, uh, I'm sure Maki can, can can say some additional stuff that he, that he just remembers, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, basically, like Lan said, a lot of cards, and this is a lot of times I had problems with Lan, and I still do, uh, where it's like, we want to make the cards look cool. And then I'm like, well, do we want to make them cool or do we want to make them readable? And it's like sometimes it's like I'm more of a fan of um, readability and more of a fan of how fast can someone understand this card. Not how cool it will look, but especially this is not a video game. This is a, um, a board game. So a lot of things come down to how simple is it and uh, putting a lot of um, like shapes and forms around it might confuse the user and um, I'm usually afraid still afraid until we maybe get to ASN to see how the people will interact with this game in person and then I can see personally how they will interact with it because I think a lot of like shapes and things um, you want to make the game for me personally understandable from the first play so when you first get into the game maybe even without reading a lot of rules that people can understand what this card is what it does and what um, what, for what reason is it? Uh, so when I was creating the backs uh, and the fronts, I always thought of not how cool it will look, but more of how sim what the symbol showing on the back will tell you. So for example, character cards, what type of a symbol can be on the back to make it instantly maybe tell to the person this is a character card this is not a monster card this is a character card and then also from the front you can see instantly this is a character card so there's a lot of things that go into this and one thing that i wanted to mention basically here is a lot of times um game like developers will want you to create certain cool uh shapes or cool forms and sometimes like this is also with lan you can't like you you can then you have to either sacrifice um a lot of readability also printing this is a lot of problems when people do, who don't uh, work in this sort of field when it gets to printing a lot of things will turn out to be a bit different than they are on the screen on the screen you can zoom in you can see it closely uh, certain symbols or certain fonts can be very readable but then when you print them out uh, all of a sudden they're not readable and uh, we still don't exactly know how it will turn out in the end because we still haven't professionally printed it all, but it should work fine. But I'm always like the one that's like always saying, let's wait, let's see how it will also turn out and then let's add this sort of things because printing can change a lot of the things. Um, and yeah, design is very important for me personally. I think also like, um, like with LAN, it's like so hard, it's like, uh, also the other guys it's like so hard to explain like you have to understand I have to think of how the how this will be put into the design so people can instantly read it no not so it's like a lot of this mumbo jumbo around it and now they don't focus on the thing that should be focused on right um, hopefully like this is a good example when you will see like um, like for example weather cards I think they're per these are the perfect cards where I would say it's a perfect mix of um, understandability and a perfect mixture of coolness or some sort of like um, uh, drawings and like certain like uh, shapes that make it look a bit cool. So yeah, that's for example, that's just from my point of view on design, yeah. Great. Uh, I think we learned a lot actually. Um, this was, um, I think we, yeah. Do you guys have anything to add, maybe, to basically talk about anything else? Uh, because I think we covered quite some, quite a lot of stuff um, today, and I actually enjoyed yeah. a lot, um, you know, um, having a conversation with you, Maki, to have a guest, to have um, a bit uh, diverse um, podcast in this kind of sense, to spice it up a bit, um, to not just listen to Lan whole day, uh, all day long to basically bore you guys you know I need to talk a bit to basically um, make it a bit fun so Lan doesn't bore you but now Maki is here and he basically uh, brought uh, you know 
it a was, lot of fun. Definitely, yeah, it was definitely more technical uh, podcast, I guess. For for those of you who um, who are either designing games, uh, who just want to take a peek about, um, take a peek into the, what graphical designing looks like and stuff like that. Um, so more more of that. Um, next time we are try we are going to try to make it a bit lighter um, um, and so on. But uh, I think it, it's good that we show people uh, how things are done behind the scenes. Uh, I think it will, will make a good diary also for us when we watch back on how we went about things. Um, so, so yeah, thanks a bunch, Maki, for, for telling people how um, the process went uh, and yeah, for, for, for stopping by uh, as a guest in this uh, amazing podcast. Uh, and Maki, uh, if you are not subscribed yet, uh, you, you should subscribe. Yeah, yeah I am subscribed. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you guys also. And yeah, if anyone has any questions or anything about design, uh, you can always ask them when we post some cards or anything personally, and I'll try to answer them. Um, if you have some sort of things, and I can try to maybe explain why this was made. Uh, if you people don't understand why certain decisions were made, or why this is uh, like it is. Um, I can help with that, yeah. Yeah, and also uh, for people who want to learn salsa, you can ask Maki about that also because he knows how to play, uh, how to dance salsa. So you can ask about that, <laughs> that kind of stuff also. <laughs> yeah. So now, now, now you have to tell us, Maki, did you get more questions about graphic design or dancing? Uh, that, <laughs> that, that's going to be an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, but also yes, we have um, our um, own Discord server, which was intended for playtesting uh, but in salsa lessons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, you can also join it and basically we are all very interactive and uh, we try to help and to interact and to communicate with all of our um, supporters all of our all of our community actually so if you have all any all questions enemies. We, we we also we also support also enemies them. yeah also enemies if someone is Hater. against our project and wants to communicate um, his anger his hatred towards the game to us we are, we gladly talk about it but the the thing I wanted to say is that if you have any questions about graphical design if you want to learn something from Maki or something like that you're very free to just jump into DMs and basically um, talk to us about it we are um, you know. We're, we're always glad to make friends, to new friends, um, and basically to meet new people, to um, interact with our community. Hence, also the podcast, right? We're not just doing it for us, we're also doing it like for, like indirectly talking to you. I think that was clear, Gal. <laughs> we said it before that we want to become a professional YouTuber, so that's, that's exactly, my point. Exactly, exactly. Exactly I mean, my point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but it's, it's a good thing to, to also show people how the game is done and to um, to meet Maki and stuff like that. But it's all about becoming a YouTuber in the end. So um, if you want to help us out with that, subscribe, give a like. Uh, you can also dislike, but then that means that you don't like salsa, Maki, uh, life in general, stuff like that, right? A legend says Maki will never find a girlfriend if you dislike this video. For every dislike this video gets, Ma Maki um, has one day more to meet his uh, girl of his dreams. And for every like, maybe he comes, um, he becomes famous, and this dream may come true, even tomorrow, mm -hmm. Maki. Thank you, thank you, guys. Maki, you're already famous. Uh, like uh, in our not, hearts. It's not your fault that some people don't know you, but like you're al already famous. <laughs> okay, I think we rambled enough. We we lost the last bit of um, audience we had, <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, Seriously, you thanks for listening. Lose, you cannot lose something that you don't have, God. True. Yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> you know, wise man once said. Anna. But <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks for listening. Anyone who did, um, who basically, um, you know, kind of struggled to till the end, and um, see you next time with uh, the fifth episode, and maybe we bring another guest. Or not? We'll see. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Take guys. care, guys. Bye, bye.